When people think of hobbies, you know what, science doesn't normally come top of mind, but how about science in your own backyard? And it helps your gardening, too. That's where Chris Kelly and Carolyn Brown come in. Uh, Chris and Carolyn have been kind of come in from Tell a Spark this morning. Chris is getting things ready. And uh, what we're going to do this morning, Carolyn, is what? We're going to figure out, uh, this is dirt and water, by the way, uh, these kind of nasty looking things. But uh, it, it, so what are we going to do with the dirt? Like, what are we trying to learn from it? So we're being amateur chemists right here amateur in our own chem backyard. That's why we have the goggles on. That's, That's very what, important. Yeah. Safety first for in the lab, yeah. even though we're not using anything especially dangerous this morning, we okay. just want to, you know, protect ourselves. Of course. And what we're going to be doing is testing our various soil samples here for their relative pH. So we're looking at whether our soil is acidic or basic and what will grow where. And that affects what can grow or not grow, right? Right, that's okay, right. Okay, yeah. Okay, so the different types of soil are what? I see they're all labeled. So yeah, so we've got a soil sample from our compost bin, okay. one from inside the garden, one from underneath a spruce tree, and one here from a wetland. A wetland. And I'm guessing all... under the spruce tree is acidic. That's what we're guessing, I'm guessing too, but, but we we're, need to we're prove gonna find it. Out. That's don't an we? excellent hypothesis. Okay, yeah, that's my hypothesis for that one. Okay, so Chris, let's get into it here. Um, quickly, I'm just going to show you what happens when we use. We're using red cabbage juice, which cabbage you can make. Cabbage juice. Yeah, it's really simple. You can make it by boiling a bit of cabbage or pouring some boiling water on top of it on so the stove. So what did you do first of all? There, you took the cabbage juice I, and added what? I just added some vinegar, and you okay. can see how it just turned bright pink yeah, right there. Yeah, kind of a And now, if pink. I drop some baking soda, oh. so right now it's acidic. If I drop some baking soda in that, we're going to get a nice fizz and reaction, Whoa. but do you see the color change? I do. I, I remember keep, that from my uh, volcano experiments in like grade three. If I keep adding that, eventually we're going to get all the way to blue and you can see the colors right here. This is the difference. So this one is acidic, this one is neutral, neutral, and, and this, this one, one is alkaline, alkaline. Yeah, yeah, or okay. basic. Or basic, okay. Basic, yeah. And so what are you doing now, Chris? I see you're mixing it with some of the dirt water. Or the dirt water must correspond to what we have in our jars, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we've got our wetland, garden, compost, and spruce tree. And yes. we're gonna add our pH indicator, that cabbage juice. The cabbage so juice, each okay. Of our soil samples that we've filtered out of these jars after yes. they sat overnight. And we, we can use those to figure out where those samples fall on the pH scale. Okay, so uh, is there in any particular order you wanna do this in, or? Well, well while, while Chris is getting ready here, Carolyn, let's talk about uh, the types of plants that grow in acidic soil and alkaline soil. So you might notice that your yard has, say, a lot of dandelions. Yeah. That can be a strong indicator of acidic soil. Really? Okay. Yeah. And the opposite, uh, an indicator of uh, basic soil or alkaline soil could be creeping bellflower or okay. noxious weed. And how, how can I get it so my, my dirt is balanced? Like, what do I need to add to the dirt? Well, there's a lot of different things that you can add. Oh, After okay. we do this testing, some of the great things to add for your garden or for your lawn are compost okay. or lime, depending on if you have uh, okay. too acidic or too basic, okay. um, yard clippings or mulch or different leaves, and everything that de decomposes in your soil releases a different pH level. Okay, let's get to it here. All so right. we're figuring out, which one do you want to test first? Well, we've actually already added the indicator to all oh, of our okay, samples, yeah. so we're ready to start analyzing. Let's analyze. Um, one of the tricky bits with this type of experiment is that you have silt and other um, sand Stuff, and clay yeah. mixed in the water, so it's kind of hard to see the colors right now, but I'm going to put up a white background okay, behind them. Okay, this is them, good, because Tom's so going to shoot this for us, too. Yeah, so that you oh, can... You, this really makes the difference obvious. Well, yeah. not super obvious, but more <laughs> visible, right? So if you take a look at it, um, the soil out of our garden is actually pretty balanced. It's sitting okay. pretty close to neutral. Neutral, I pulled okay. this out of a really healthy part of our yard. Okay. Um, the soil from the wetland, wetland actually falls more on the alkaline side. So ah. you can see it's starting to turn green. And the one that we had the question about, the spruce trees, actually came out on that same side. It's slightly blue, slightly green. Okay. Um, we went to great lengths, a lot of Googling, to try to figure out whether or not spruce trees actually make the ground acidic. Yeah. And there's a bit of a debate over that. Really? Um, part of the reason why there are less things growing under a spruce tree is that there's less water, there's okay. less light, and there's no open ground. Sure. But, as Carolyn mentioned, the decomposing uh, pine needles can make it more acidic. I pulled this from an area that didn't have a lot of pine needles. I see. And it's actually kind of alkaline. There you go. And then our compost, why don't you compare it to the scale? Compost, which is the scale here? Oh, th these three here. Put the white behind it so we can shoot it. The whiteboard behind it, Chris. Sorry, Carolyn, we're reaching That's it for okay. you. That's okay. That's cool. I'll just so, hide back here. <laughs> I don't know, I'd, I'd make it look like the one on the far left. No, am I wrong? Uh, I think it might be, it's 
pretty close to neutral and maybe just a tiny bit on the acidic there side. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, and so, uh, for information on this, do you guys have it on the Telespark website? Like, yeah. if people want to kind of do this at home and that type of thing? Yeah. In the next uh, couple of hours, you can head to our blog, yeah. um, which is on uh, sparkscience.ca. All right. Good stuff. All right. Excellent.